Oh, happy return. Okay, so advanced functions, which is typically a course kind of in the Canadian system, or at least for now it is, uh, with regards to grade 12. It's one of the few that they offer. And I'll try to go into this course. So this video is gonna be just an introduction. However, uh, to be honest with you, if you've taken the grade 11 functions and you had a teacher which actually covered um, kind of almost all the material that they were supposed to cover, you almost wouldn't really need advanced functions. Uh, there are maybe just a few extra items in that grade 12 course uh, so that are on top of that grade 11 one. Now, I have covered the entire grade 11 and I've actually included probably more than you ever would have done in your regular high school course. So, you know, I'm gonna start actually kind of referencing certain things back so you'll see some of the, the material. And maybe what I'll do is, I'll put up a link up above to the entire grade 11 playlist, okay, for functions. But if you're a, kind of a keen student uh, and you've noticed and you kind of followed me throughout, so you will notice that on my site, which is the 1M Journey, I mean, it might change over time, right? I might change some of the things, but you will find, so either under learn, okay? So if you hit that, you're gonna see high school math plus, because I might be adding some other things as well. Um, or if you kind of scroll down, you're gonna see 1M journey and it'll have a math, right? So if you hit that button, it will take you to the kind of foundational math page. Um, at least for now, it's the foundational math page. Maybe I'll put a little plus because it might add more. And, you know, if you scroll through here, and so yes, yeah, so all of these are videos. So there are links from grade nine, grade 10, every single subject you could kind of imagine in terms of math. And then here's grade 11. Uh, so what I encourage students to do in their advanced uh, functions, uh, definitely go through this introduction, you know? So uh, in this video, what I'll talk about is items that you have already done in grade 11 and just even before. And you know, if you really wanna kind of soup yourself up and get yourself ready for your advanced functions, uh, if you cover all of these topics, okay, so that I have. Now, obviously this is for those keen students who actually wanna go you know, beyond just doing what's necessary and then just moving on. Um, so my assumption is that you know, you're a keen student who kinda wanna get themselves into the 90s plus and really kinda kick butt, right, in, in math. And then you know, you're gonna carry on and take some of the math courses later on in university or maybe in, even in colleges, okay? So that's where you can find that information. So I'm gonna reference you back to here. And so coming back to this video, so as an introduction, I'm gonna go over these topics, right? So I love talking about functions from the viewpoint of inputs and outputs. In high school, you pretty much, your input is just a single input. You know, you have your X, which is your independent variable, and it's really just the one. And then, you know, it goes through some kind of a mapping into your output, which is your dependent variable, uh, because it depends on your input. Um, but you can imagine where these functions are super useful when even right now, you actually have multiple inputs coming into this computer making the video, right? There is the just, just a voice and then the actual um, image, right, is already, you know, two inputs coming in, you know, voice plus the actual, um, you know, video stream that's going through, you know, and then you also have other items as well, okay? But in general, what you study in high school is typically just one kind of an input, right? Or you change things back into one input and then you have one output coming out. All right, so these concepts of independent and dependent variables, you know, you should have studied all the way back to grade nine, to be honest with you. Um, and so that it carries forward in advanced functions. So, you know, it's an assumption that you should know that, okay? These independent and dependent variables. Now, um, what I'm gonna discuss is, you know, I may not touch as much on independent and dependent variables, but in terms of, going back and kind of refreshing, you know, relations versus functions, you know, what really makes it a function, um, you know, the notation that we're using, we kind of always say f of x, okay, or f at x, 
and that is simply you know f just really kind of just stands for function right we don't really have to say f because if we have multiple functions you know we might call it g of x or g at x or h of x or whatever it is that you want now we primarily use f because it's just kind of goes hand in hand with functions and then there's different ways of representing things so you can have it in, in a numerical way which might be like a table of values or something like that you know you might have the actual algebraic one where it's written out okay as algebra you know f of x is equal to okay and so on or you might have it a very beautiful picture as a graphical tool and for graphical tools i love to utilize decimals as you know if you've watched any of my past videos and i hope that if any teachers ever watch any of my videos you know they might get swayed to utilizing decimals uh, as well now there are functions which are both discrete and continuous all right so kind of knowing the differences between the two i'll give i'll give an example or so um and then you know thinking about horizontal versus vertical asymptotes okay within these functions you know kind of refreshing yourself back on that and then definitely understanding you know the domain and range which was probably done to exhaustion in grade 11 in the videos you've watched um, but i'll go over a few examples here so this is really just meant to you know i've wrote these little few things out if they all ring a bell to you and you remember them great you know so the first kind of class for advanced functions isn't meant to be a hard one it's more to try to you know bring you back a little bit all right and there is a huge amount of overlap okay between grade 11 functions and then advanced functions that you have i almost would remove advanced functions entirely if grade 11 functions were actually taught um, in kind of not a proper way but they would cover enough content but most teachers may run out of time um, just because you know the students taking the actual grade 11 functions uh, you know may not have a solid foundation enough and understand it all right so let's take a look at all of these and i'm going to try to look at it from the viewpoint um, of some of these examples. I've prepared a few examples here and I'll kind of glance through all the different little things because I find, you know, doing it by example uh, helps a lot, all right? So the standard thing that you have, you know, if you ever studied relations, you know, I'm kind of going to copy this down and bring it down right here, is that, you know, you might have, so this is, you know, kind of your independent variable, all right, where you are mapping independent okay so this might be your input x all right and then your x has been given or assigned several values right so it's being assigned either a negative one a zero two three or a five and then it's being mapped over okay so these would have been your outputs all right so what does it have so this is kind of your like your dependent variable um so in this case these are actually just results right so we can't really call that a variable Okay, per se, because we know that these are the actual values, all right? So this would have been your y, okay? So that's commonly done. And you might have seen this all the way back to grade nine, where, you know, someone gives you negative one. And in this case, you know, they say that, okay, so negative one basically maps to two. And here's your ordered pair between x and y. Now, this is a relation, okay? It kind of goes back between one and the other right and then you can go through all of these you know so we have zero so zero maps to one um two you know two maps to two three you know three also maps to two you know five and maps to three as well so you can write these out kind of are these ordered pairs that you have you can also write it out as a table of values which you know can is, is often done um, and i'll kind of go through so ne negative one let's say zero two three and five and if i say that this was my x okay and then this was my output y you know so negative one which was two zero which was mapped to one uh two was mapped to two so three was mapped to two as well and then five was mapped to three all right so within this example if i kind of scan this out so this would have been um, kind of a numerical way of representing okay this relation now is it a function um, so now we have to kind of refresh back so what did that mean well what it meant was that for every single input that we get okay so let's say negative one um, it has a unique 
k output all right so in all of these so this is for every single input that you have so for every single one it will only have one value assigned to it as its output okay because it's going to be unique so we we can't actually have let's say negative one being mapped to two things where negative one can be a two okay or it can also be a one or maybe a two okay because then there is confusion and we don't know all right so if it gets mapped to two and then to one as well you know if we ever want to go back in reverse okay which we're kind of called inverse okay functions so i won't talk about that in this video um, then we don't know right how we can kind of go back okay from one to the other so functions have a very unique output there's only one assigned for every single input that you get and that's true for all of your inputs so in this case you know is this a function yes it is a function because every single value of x has only one individual output now notice that indeed you know you can like you can have outputs which are identical for the inputs that's not a problem so negative negative one and then two and three all have exactly the same output that's fine as long as you don't have an input mapped to two or more okay outputs which differ so that's not what we want to have all right so now from here okay so if we have um this you know you can also graph this now this would have been discrete all right um because of the fact that you know there's no continuity okay between so i only have one two three four five so five ordered pairs so they would have really been just points if i ever wanted to graph them out and i'm sure you know how to graph that right um you know you can go back to grade 9 10 11 you're doing that quite often all right so it is a function okay so that is definitely true uh it's discrete uh, because of the fact that we have okay no continuity okay in between right um so that's something that we carry forward um and now what else can we talk about from the viewpoint of these okay so in, the, in terms of these um you know it is a relation it's also a function okay so every function is a relation by the way all right not necessarily in reverse now um, the notation we don't necessarily need for this now it was represented in a numerical way we can certainly graph it if we like you know it was discrete for us um and now it doesn't really have any asymptotes oh okay so i mean asymptotes we're kind of we'll see in different forms now the domain versus the range well the domain is actually pretty simple because of the fact that everything was given to us you know so if we write let's say domain okay if we want to define our domain within here really our domain is negative one zero two three five so those are all the values of the input that it can take on and then our range is just you know all the values um, that the outputs can take on and in this case it only took on three of them all right so this was the range so that's what we would have so that's the first example which we carried out within here right so nothing extraordinary now what if we take this next one this is a graphical way of being able to represent okay now is this actually a function so it is a relation so relation is always some kind of a relationship between your inputs and your output all right but if you move over and you start asking is it a function okay so now we have a problem okay now the problem is if it's in graphed form then it's actually pretty easy to test for a function you may remember that this was the vertical line test where you can take a line all right i'm going to kind of draw a dotted line in here um and if you put this dotted line so you know let's make it vertical and now if i start shifting it around um so if you go through this it's if it's a function that means that the vertical line will only be able to go through one point all right on that actual graph now if we assume that the blue which is really just a circle is our actual graph of you know whatever relation this was now it's a circle relation 
uh, and if you may remember circles. So in this case, I, I actually kind of know, you know, let's see if you remember. Okay, so this, you know, looks like it's centered at zero. So it's gonna be very easy, you know, so circles to kind of take on this form and then they have a radius, okay, which is squared like this. Now the one squared is gonna be just one. So this would have been, okay, our algebraic okay, expression for this relationship between X and Y and we could graph it all the way through and it's centered at zero. Now it doesn't pass our vertical test because of the fact that if I take the line and I start moving it around, okay, for one value, so I don't know what exactly what, what value this was, right? Maybe it's minus 0 0.75 or something like that. But it maps to two things, which means I would get, you know, if I assume that it was 0 0.75, all right? It will map to two values, okay? So it's going to map to one value over here and it's going to map to another value over here. So it's going to have, okay, whatever that is, let's call this y1, and then let's call this y2, okay? So it has, for the same thing, it has two outputs. So for one input, it's giving us two outputs, which we cannot have. So it fails the vertical line test, and um, it cannot be a function, all right? So that's kind of a deja vu, hopefully for you, that you may kind of remember. All right. Now, in terms of, you know, talking about domain and ranges. So notice um, this in this case is continuous. All right. Um, so it's not discrete because there are no between every single um, graphed point that we have. OK, there's a continuity between them. Right. So here our domain for for this particular item. So our domain really is just so if I would write it out. So this is all the values for x. So these would have been real values in this case, such that, okay, now my x is going to be between negative 1 and 1. All right. So those are all the different values that I could take on. So if I would you know, kind of highlight it for myself in here, this is what it would have been. Okay, if I'm going to blow this up. Now, my range, which is the output, well, it's going to be exactly the same, okay, ex except it's in the vertical, right? So in that case, what it would be, it would have been all the values from here because those are all the values that it takes on. So that would have been my range. So you can write the range and you could have said that y okay, is also an element of real numbers such that okay, your y is between negative 1 and 1, all right? So that's what we have within here. So that kind of hopefully gives you a sense, okay? So this first one was a function. The second one is not a function. It's only a relation uh, and it's a circle, all right? Now we can continue this, right? So we can, you know, take something like this. And so this will kind of really test you. I wonder if you can graph this on your own. You might be a little bit rusty, that's fine. But if you go back to grade 11 and you start thinking back to, you know, trigonometry and graphing those sines and cosines, you know, probably it would quickly come back to you. All right. Now, because this is an introduction, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of graph it for you. Um, and I'll use decimals. Right. And it'll give me an opportunity to bring that decimals back. OK. And again, so you can test it out yourself and play with it. And again, I hope your teachers really allow you to use it. It's an amazing uh, tool to have. All right. So let's try this one. Um, you know, so is this going to be a function? It's going to be or is it going to be a relation? You may remember, you know, sines and cosines are actually functions because they take only one value. You know, we'll see that vertical test line up. Um, they do have kind, kind of a, a restricted range because sines and cosines kind of start oscillating back and forth, right? They're periodic in some way. Uh, this one, it doesn't look like they kind of restricted anything for us in terms of the domain. So the, the domain, I guess, could have been everything. Now, one thing for sines and cosines, you, you kind of may remember um, that it will depend on the input. Is it going to be in degrees or is it going to be in radians? OK, so that's something that you can kind of think about. Now, in decimals, if you don't specify, typically it's typically in radians, but you can always change it to degrees uh, because remember sines, you know, cosines, tangents. Um, so those trigonometric functions actually deal with uh, angles, 
right? So let's take a look. I'm going to graph this, and it's going to give us an opportunity to try to, you know, kind of go back to decimals and test things out. So I'm going to do that, All right? I'll split it up in half. I'll go back in here to decimals, and I'm going to plot it out. So what do we have? We have y is equal to, so this is 2 sine of, so negative x, okay? So plus 1. Um, you may remember your transformations, right? So it's kind of a shift up of uh, 3, um, you know, the, the negative inside there. You know, there's, it's going to have kind of a, a mirror image around there. The 2, okay, just really tells us, you know, what's happening to the amplitude. Um, but if you don't remember that, that's okay, all right? For the time being, it's just an introduction. So let's take a look here, okay, so what we have. Um, now, on this little range that you see here, okay, on the, on the top right of decimals, okay, so I can go back here, and you can change these, okay, if you want it. Notice it's in radians. I can change it back to degrees um, like this, so radians and degrees. It doesn't matter what you use. Uh, the example I specified, it didn't state. So, you know, I can leave it in degrees because most students kind of are more comfortable in degrees, at least for an introductory purpose. And, you know, so degrees go between 0 and 360, and then, you know, it just keeps changing around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do this so that you can see it, all right? And then notice that the period, you know, just keeps repeating, right? So within here, and so what we have is we can see that the domain basically can take on any values, okay? So any degrees that we take that we wish, both positive and negative. And there is kind of a cap, right? So if I, you know, take a look at here, um, if I go up here, um, so it looks like it kind of goes uh, all the way up to, okay, so in, in this case, it goes up to, you know, five, um, you know, so we, we are kind of shifted it over, right? So notice the amplitude, which is two, we've shifted it up by three, you know, so three plus two is going to be five. So, you know, so it's kind of gets shifted all the way up there. And then this one, okay, gets shifted a little bit um, out in, in, uh, in this particular way. All right. So that's what we have there. So it goes between one and five. So that's your range. Um, it is a function. It passes your vertical line tests. Um, there's really no asymptotes or anything. So asymptotes, uh, that means they would approach something. I'm going to do an example shortly of an asymptote where, you know, it gets closer and closer and closer to some, some kind of a vertical or a horizontal asymptote. Um, but in this case, it doesn't happen because it's just oscillating kind of back and forth. All right. So that's what we have for this example. Okay, let's take a look, um, you know, if there's anything special. Okay, so this was an algebraic representation um, because we actually were given the function itself in an algebraic form. And then I just graphed it. So that would have been a graphical representation. Uh, it was continuous because I assumed that we're taking on all values of the um, degrees in this case. All right. And then the domain and range we discussed. Okay. So that's another great example as an introduction. So here's another one, you know, so something like this. Okay, so I'm going to copy this, maybe bring it down for you. I will put it on decimals as well. Now let's take a look and see. Okay, you know, can we kind of think back, you know, how would this look like? So it's 1 over x squared, right? You know, so I'm going to kind of think about graphing. You know, I'm cheating. I, I do enjoy this. You know, you, you may not remember it as well. I mean, I love kind of working with these functions throughout. You know, so this is my x. This is my f of x. I can kind of start thinking about sketching. Um, you know, so what happens on the negative side, for instance, in this case, you know, as x gets uh, in magnitude bigger and bigger on the negative, right? And then you square it. Notice it's in the denominator. So what's going to happen to the overall function, okay? The value of the output as x gets bigger and bigger in magnitude, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Um, now it's going to get smaller and it's going to start approaching zero. Okay. So what's going to happen here is if you were thinking, you can always kind of do a table of values for yourself if you want, you know, but this is going to start looking like this, it's going to get smaller. And then here, as you get closer to zero, okay, from both sides, it's going to try to get closer and closer to the vertical line. 
because it's blowing up on us, right? So notice one divided by an extremely small number, okay? Um, that means it's gonna start blowing up. And because the it's x squared, so even if it's negative, you've squared, it's gonna become positive, right? And then on the other side, it's gonna happen the same thing, except it's gonna go in this way. So here, the reason why I brought this up um, is because A, notice that in this case, our domain that we have, it's all values that we can take on for x, except we cannot take on the value of zero because if we put zero into this, right, we get undefined. So this is interesting. So our domain is going to be all values, all real values for x, but it cannot be equal to zero, right? Now our range, notice that it takes on all values above zero, right? So there's no negative values for your range. It takes on all values above zero, all right? So that's your range. Now it is continuous, um, except, you know, there's, I guess, a kind of a discontinuity at zero because of the fact that our, we don't have a, a value for the domain because it's undefined, but for the rest, it's, it's continuous, right? So that's what we have in there. So it's not discrete because it doesn't take on discrete points, you know? Now discrete, you can always think of as if you were plotting it, it would have been, if you zoomed close enough, right? You would always have a gap. You know, you can always find a discontinuity, okay? Between, and then, you know, if you continued on, you know, graphing, okay? These points, this would have been discrete because it does not actually have a continuity, right? They're not continuous like that. All right, so I'm not sure if that will help, but it may kind of bring you back between this continuous and discrete. So discrete, many teachers don't talk about at all, but in reality, we use discrete because we use computers and everything's digital, so we don't really have continuity, right? It's always all just zeros and ones, okay, that we have in there. So I like to bring it in, at least in the introduction. Okay, so now, um, we do have two asymptotes. We have a vertical asymptote in here. So if I graph this, so notice if I put this, um, notice as x gets bigger and bigger on the negative and bigger and bigger on the positive, it starts to approach zero, but it never gets there, right? Because it's always one over some big number, um, which is never going to be zero. It's just going to continue in this way. So this is called a horizontal asymptote because it starts to approach it and you also have a vertical asymptote and your vertical asymptote here happens at zero right because as we get closer and closer to as we approach x is equal to zero from both sides our function kind of starts to blow up right i mean it gets closer and closer so we have an asymptote okay which is a vertical asymptote but because we never touch it but we get closer and closer to it that's what makes it the asymptote. So one is vertical, the other one is horizontal. And it is a function, again, um, because if we take our vertical line test, okay, um, you know, we can see that there's only one value for every single input, which is uh, great to see. Now, if I wanted to plot this out on Desmos, so if I go back in here, I'm gonna kind of remove this one, but if I put this one up in here, this was one over x squared, um, so notice that I'm going to have to kind of zoom in because it's going to look kind of silly from uh, too far out. So notice it, it looks exactly how I drew it out, right? So it kind of blows up and then it gets closer and closer to zero. But it never reaches it because if we zoom in, you know, we'll notice that it's getting closer and closer and closer, but never reaches it. All right. So that's a, another great function. Okay, um, in terms of an introduction. Now, what else did they have? Oh, they had this one, okay, so for us. So this is a, a pretty cool one. So I'm gonna copy this down, bring it down in here. And so what we have from this point of view is it looks like we have an exponential. And this is neat because I wonder if your teachers in grade 11 actually talked about this, right, which was Euler's number. Um, and I do talk about that in, in uh, functions grade 11, so you can take a look at that, and you will most likely also talk about it in advanced functions later on, all right? But, okay, so this you can just assume it's a number. It's approximately 2.71, and it continues on. 
um, and it is an exponential. Now, the way, the reason why I wrote this out is because it looks like they constrained our domain only to natural numbers between 0 and 20. So it would have been 0, 1, 2, 3, you know, all the way up to 20. So this is an actually discrete function, okay? They already gave us the domain, and now the range, we would actually have to plug in 0, get the value, right, corresponding value. So this would have been you know, y at zero, let's say, okay? Then we would have to plug in one, we would have gotten the second one, and then so on, so we would have to find out. And we would do exactly the same thing. So that would have been our range. I'm not gonna do that within here. Um, I think you can plug it in yourself. It also will test your ability to see, okay? You know, these values of e, so you know, it would have been, so this one would have been e to the this, Okay, so it's e to the zero, which really just meant one. Then you would have had e to the negative one, e to the negative two, you know, and so on. So this would have been our, you know, and you can put it as a set, okay, and then define your range. So that's what you would have had there. Now, it's still a function because it gives you unique outputs. All right, it is discrete. Um, and you can also graph it uh, as well, okay? So for this one, and it's a nice graph that you can do, okay, for this. So if I go back in here, you know, you can define this. Um, I actually uh, do this, okay, within, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and go back to, to these videos and you can actually graph, okay? So in grade 11, all right, so, you know, graphing, so how to plot a sequence in decimals, okay? So notice I'm gonna blow up in here, and if you hit that, you would have um, it would have shown you how to graph something like that if you wanted. And maybe I'll put up a link above there so that you can see it. All right, and I'm curious, you can put some comments if you were able to do it or not, okay? So that brings us kind of towards the end. Um, so there here is another one for you. So this one looks like it's a quadratic, right? So for this quadratic, let's graph it. I mean, quadratics we know, you know, so from grade, you know, even 10, okay, and then from grade 11, quadratics are, are basically continuous functions that we have, and they provide us a parabola, right? So in this case, the parabola looks like it's going to be looking upwards, okay, because the it's 2x squared, we can, um, you know, do the, 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 we can do the completion of square to find the vertex if we wanted to, so that's a nice reminder for yourself to see if you remember. Um, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'll put it into decimals for us. And that's gonna be it, okay? Kind of as our review. So I'm gonna put this in here. Let's see what it gives us. So two x squared, and this is gonna be minus eight x plus seven. And let's have it. All right, let me now zoom out okay so there we have it and okay so this is how it looks like there's our parabola there's our vertex so if you do your you know complete this complete the square type of thing uh, you're going to get your vertex back so it's a nice parabola so it looks like okay so our domain basically it's all the inputs and then we have above so starting from negative one Okay, our range and then anything above. So it is continuous and it is a function. All right, so that hopefully gives you a nice introduction to these course of advanced uh, function and we'll see you in future videos. Bye everybody, cheers.